Today we're going to look at building bike one antennas. Now, there is a few designs out there. Um, most of them, though, are just a simple PCB with uh, the actual bike one on top. Doesn't offer any kind of protection or anything like that. Um, there's a really good one out there which uses a CD spindle, and I've used this for quite some time. But I decided to try and make a design of my own because it does just look like a CD spindle on a tripod so I actually came up with this design which is really really simple and easy to make and if you watch the rest of this video I'll show you how to make it so if you download the PDF for the template for this bike one antenna there's a link at the bottom of the video where you can download it from you've got uh, two shapes here this one is the back reflector and also we'll be drilling a hole through there to hold the connector for the driven element and this one is for the plastic cover to protect the driven element. Now this one here if you get yourself one of those two litre bottles of fizzy drink and if you stick that template to the side so you can cut round it and then you will end up with that okay so this for this back reflector here I've used some aluminium sheeting and what I've done I've stuck that down onto here and then cut around it put them here like so okay if you haven't got anything like the aluminium sheeting then you can use things like old sweet tins cookie tins that sort of thing you can just stick it down and then cut around it and then you can paint over this afterwards but uh, that's also a good source so if you use uh, something like a cutting wheel on a dremel something like that makes it a lot easier to cut out the little slots here where we're going to fit the plastic cover to protect so the driven element the uh, protective cover is going to look like when you've got it in place before we actually go and attach that permanently we're now going to move on to building the driven element so we, before we start building the driven element for the bike one antenna I thought it'd be useful to have a look at the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum itself now this is a spectrum here we've got channels 1 through to 14 although 13 and 14 we don't use in the UK or you're not supposed to 14 I think you're allowed to use that in Japan I'm not quite sure but concentrating on channels 1 through to 12 now when I build a driven element for any antenna I normally concentrate on channel 6 which puts me in the middle of the spectrum and if we have a look here the driven element to be tuned exactly to channel 6 needs to be 30.7 millimeters in length now to put that into perspective I have here a representation of um, two measurements for two driven elements one drill driven element here is exactly tuned to channel 1 which is 31.2 millimeters this one here is on channel 12 30.1 millimeters and that little bit there is the difference between them both so when we're building a driven element by hand it's almost impossible to get it spot on but even though taking a little bit of time to get it as close to as possible really does make a big difference to the antenna itself when it's finished so what I've gone ahead and done is I've drilled a hole for this BNC connector here which is what we're going to be using to attach the driven element to I've also got one of these angle brackets you can get from most hardware stores I got a bag of five for a pound and uh, you also want to drill out the hole on one of the ends the same size as the BNC connector so it'll go straight through because you're going to be using this bracket to attach it to a little mini tripod or something like that but before we start putting it together you want to now get a little piece of emery paper and you want to make sure all the sides are nice and smooth so you don't put yourself on them and also you can round off corners a little bit so here's the BNC connector fitted to the back reflector you don't overly tighten this I can still move that little tag there just slightly and also the bracket on the back so 
the actual BNC connector is holding the bracket in and the reflector with all one nut. So now we're going to actually build the driven element of the bi-quad antenna itself and if we have a look at this diagram here we've got the driven element here it goes around like a bow tie shape and each side of the driven element is 30.7 millimeters as I said in the beginning that's roughly tuned to channel 6 on the spectrum or on your router and 30.7 millimeters it's really hard to get that exact by hand but that is actually one quarter wavelength this here is a side view of the driven element and this is the back reflector so this space here is actually one eighth of a wavelength so we're actually going to have it spaced up away from the back reflector 15 millimeters the back reflector as a minimum needs to be 121 millimeters square so if we have a look here this is actually slightly bigger than 121 millimeters but we need to have 15 millimeter gap there where our driven element is going to be and each side of the driven element is going to be 30.7 millimeters you want some copper wire not too thick this is wire from a earth wire in a house just normal household earth wire it's uh, it's quite soft it's easy to bend here I've got some brazing rod which again makes very good antennas I use this quite a lot but the trouble with the brazing rod is I've got to ground it down a little bit at the end because it's too thick to fit inside the little plug there on the BNC connector so just bear that in mind when you're choosing your copper wire you don't want it too thick so what you're going to need is a pair of needle nose pliers and as we don't want to be measuring off each 30.7 millimeters along as we do our bends what I've done is I've got a piece of rigid plastic card and I've actually measured off 30.7 millimeters along there and I find it a lot easier using this to get my bends correctly so to start off with I'm not going to measure I'm just going to put a bend in there and this end is what we're going to use to solder in around our BNC connector and our uh, reflector so we don't have to measure that at the minute just leave it nice and long so for the second bend take my little piece of plastic card put it up against that last bend like that and take my needle nose pliers get them up against there card away put bending like so <clears throat> right, so we'll do the next bend I'm going to be bending downwards in that direction needle nose pliers got it in place remove the card and bend in So now the next bend is going to be bending up that way. And the last one we want to go this way to bring it in line with this and that is our basic bi-quad antenna shape so now you've finished your bending your bi-quad antenna and you're happy with it you want to solder these two together now these where it joins up So now we want to solder a length of wire, straight wire, 
onto this BNC connector. So what you want to do is tin the end of the wire and tin the actual BNC connector. So cut yourself a piece of wire, make it quite long because heat travels. You don't want to burn your fingers and you're going to solder it as straight as you can get it into there like that. So that's it soldered in and if you tin it and tin the wire as well if you just get your soldering iron and apply a little bit of heat to the side and push down you should get a nice fit. Try not to keep your soldering iron on too long because this plastic here it's uh, very sensitive to heat and it can melt. So now what you want to do with this little connector here we're going to actually solder to that so you want to bend it up slightly a 90 degree angle and get your needle nose pliers and just get the end of it where the hole is and bend that back on itself like so so what I've done I've trimmed this off this leg here off to 15 millimeters and I've also trimmed away that one there because we don't want that one and it's all soldered up nicely onto there and what we want to do now we want to mount this so it's exactly 15 millimeters away from the back reflector and if I try and solder it now it's wobbling all over the place so what you need to do is get yourself some cardboard 15 millimeters thick and you can arrange this cardboard like so to hold your driven element in place while you solder it so that is now soldered on to the back reflector there so now we want to solder this bend here touching onto this part here this straight bit so once you've got that soldered onto there then you want to get your needle nose pliers and pinch in and get those two points there as close as you can without touching and then we're ready to put the cover on top so that's it finished now I'm just going to get a little clean get rid of uh, any dust and uh, it's ready for some paint now one last thing I want to show you is the little tabs here and here now you can either glue those down you want something quite strong like an epoxy glue or you can do what I've done here I've got these little plastic um, screws with um, nuts on the end little bolts just drill through and it holds the tabs into place there and there and one final thing that really finishes this off is um, if you bend in the edges and make it look make it look like this here this makes it look a little bit better and also lowers the footprint a little bit so I hope you enjoyed that video and you'll download the template and have a go at building one yourself they're quite easy to do you just got to take your time and get the measurements as close as you can and um, they are my favorite antenna out of all the different antenna designs you can find out there they really are powerful remember they are a directional antenna so they'll only work in the direction if you're pointing it at uh, where the actual wireless signal is coming from um, I'll show you this another design that I've made and basically I modified the windsurfer template and I came up with this one and I have used this quite a bit um, something else you could do instead of using the plastic bottle to uh, make the cover to protect the bipod element you can use a grid like this and I got this from an old plastic basket and this is my video scanner and uh, I made the bike quite a little bit different on this one so uh, you can have a go messing around and uh, changing it a little bit so I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did please give it a big thumbs up and I'll see you next time